There's a process in nature called bioluminescence. Some jellyfish can emit light in the dark, and we use that a bit like a blueprint. I'm fascinated by making use of physical effects to answer open questions. In the long run, I want to make medical contributions in order to improve the lives of patients. Maite Gata researches at the intersection between biology, medicine, and physics. Through the effects of optics, he addresses completely new questions and possibilities. In 2013, he started researching here in St. Andrews, Scotland. It sounds like science fiction, light-operated nerve cells, and lasers in living cells. At first, it was a question of curiosity. Is that feasible? Am I able to construct a living laser? Is it possible? But from there, many concepts derived that we deploy today in our group. It was an inspiration and showed me that addressing basic questions out of pure curiosity was important, often without having a specific application in mind. Sometimes that results in new things that you wouldn't have thought of if you hadn't just done the experiment. What started as Just Try It has by now evolved into something that has the potential to open several new doors in medical research. For example, Gata and his team have developed a technique to miniaturize lasers so that they can be integrated into living cells, all emitting their own specific light pattern, like a barcode. In this way, each individual cell can be identified and tracked. We believe that this barcoding of cells is of particular interest to cancer research because we really want to understand which cells break out of primary tumors and then migrate to other sites in the body to form metastases. Methodically, I think the quest is to make these lasers even more compact. We don't want to disturb biology with our experiment. We just want to follow it, observe it. One of several fascinating applications of nanobiophotonics. Another application is developed next door in the clean room. Maite Gata has long been researching OLEDs, light-emitting diodes that obtain their light from organic semiconductors. They revolutionize smartphone screens and televisions. Now it's time for a medical application, Gata says. The idea? OLEDs should revolutionize optogenetics. This specialization is working on selectively activating nerve cells through light the researchers hope to investigate complex nerve networks and to be able to treat diseases such as Parkinson's in the future. However, the technology is still in the animal testing stage. In optogenetics, neurons are genetically modified until they react like switches to light. Up to now, this light has been coming through the skull in a highly invasive and often non-selective way. A thin, flexible tissue with applied OLED diodes could nestle directly on the brain and precisely activate individual neurons through thousands of individually controllable light pixels. The interesting thing about the research is that we actually have to succeed in making the OLED extremely stable, even in this aqueous environment. We don't want to introduce a rigid, stiff object into the brain, but something that can adapt flexibly and amorphously to its structure. That's still a challenge for us, but I think we're right at the forefront at the moment because we have flexible OLEDs that can work in these humid, wet environments long term. In Scotland, Maite Gata has brought together an interdisciplinary team of physicists, biologists and chemists. Some of them will accompany him to Germany. I think we've somehow succeeded in assembling a team at St. Andrews over the last few years with an incredible spirit. A team that's developed a great willingness to cooperate and a way of working together. And one of my main goals is to incorporate this team spirit in the new location. Making the world a better place through new solutions. In St. Andrews, Maita Gata has translated his vision into concrete research projects which, at some point, could help to heal. Now he is taking up the Humboldt professorship in Germany to continue his research there. For him and his family, the professorship is not only a transition from the Scottish vastness to the colorful city of Cologne. Above all else, it is a change to an extended research environment with plenty of new perspectives. The large network of medical cooperation partners directly on site are very interesting for us regarding the move to Cologne. 
The University of Cologne has a very large clinic and we hope that we will have a larger network of physicians and biologists who will come up with interesting questions and make it possible for us to test our technologies even more broadly and hopefully then, of course, to apply them more broadly in the future. One of the most interesting potential cooperations? The Excellence Cluster CCAD, where questions on cell aging and degenerative diseases are being researched. Which forces act between cells? This is a question that Gata's team can already answer for Petri dish samples with the help of physical optical measurement methods. Our long-term hope, of course, is that with the methods Mate is developing, we can also measure tissue forces so that we know where the forces are. And we really do have a resolution that works on the cellular level and not on the whole tissue, for example. That would be an exciting thing that is also non-invasive so that we can actually measure this over time in the living tissue. And this is what we hope will work in the end. In layman's terms, the procedure is based on the fact that the reflections of a surface change when forces act upon it. Essentially, it does not matter whether it is caused by blowing, as here, or by the forces of neighboring cells. Changes that can be measured to draw conclusions about the forces acting. This is no different for a living cell than for a soap bubble. In Cologne, Maita Gata will set up and manage a newly founded research center for nanobiophotonics in order to further translate basic physical research into biomedical approaches. Science is a constant learning process, and you can change, you can learn new things, you can understand new processes, and you can contribute to taking science a step further. That's a wonderful feeling.